basically they told me it was unethical, unethical for them to let us conceive by their practice. prize whatever was not the charges for the visit that's what we got out of it was a free consultation the emotional damage it did to me being bipolar and having um, a little bit of PTSD from things that happened when I was a child and just a general horrible image of my own body plummeted and this became a theme amongst all the other doctors that our primary OBG tried to refer to us to. Finally, we get to this summer. During the course of all of his treatments, our OBG did laparoscopic diagnostic stuff and saw really no problems whatsoever. The flow was good. The blockage, there were no blockages, there wasn't a lot of scarring, but still couldn't figure out why I wasn't ovulating on my own, and it was beyond his knowledge. And finally, we were referred to West Virginia University's Center for Reproductive Medicine in Morgantown, West Virginia, which is about an hour or so away from us, to an awesome doctor who took one look at me without doing an exam not even touching me, took one look at my skin and knew immediately why I had PCOS. I have insulin resistance. My body produces far too much insulin and I thought, oh, it's because I'm fat. Actually, no. It's something that can happen to a lot of people and apparently it's something that I've had since I was a teenager. It actually causes the weight gain. It causes the weight gain. It can mess around with your mental process. It can be contributing to my bipolar problems and staying the way I need to stay um, as far as mental stability goes. And there's a lot of problems with my general health that are minor things that it's causing and it's been a problem since I was a teenager and not a single doctor told me what was wrong. Not a single doctor. Not even a skin doctor that she's been to for other reasons. Not e Yeah, my dermatologist who I see for eczema and psoriasis, not even he picked up on it. What it looks like is she has dirt bands around her neck and... Around my areas. bust line, um, on my thighs, and other areas, and it looks like I have a really, really dark tan slash I'm really, really dirty, and that's neither of the case. It's an uh, insulin buildup. I, it's just where the insulin kind of pools and sits, and basically, not only does this cause PCOS, this also causes my body to chemically think it's pregnant. I am not pregnant, but my body chemically thinks I am. So this was what? Three, three two, two three. or three weeks ago that we got this news? I'd say three. Was... And Dr. Horowitz didn't say anything right away, but after he did the exam and everything, as we were going through it, he's like, huh, you have insulin resistance for sure. You've got this, this, this. And he started pointing out all these different issues. Things that I've lived with my entire life that I thought was normal because nobody pointed it out as being a problem. And he looked right at my husband after describing some treatment options for us and said, Do you know what this means for you? You'll be changing diapers. He's the first doctor to give us real, tangible hope. But, oh, yeah. Once we get her insulin under control, under control, the other option then, or one of the said surefire methods is IVF or IUI. Oh, yeah. Um, 
there's a slight difference between the two. IUI introduces, I believe, introduces, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, guys, because I'm sure some of you know this more than we do. Um, the IUI is basically introducing his swimmers into the most optimal location for me to conceive from the experience, whereas IVF, I believe, is transferring embryos that are already fertilized and ready to go. So one happens in the body for fertilization, one happens without, but either way, it's very expensive. Being that I teach in West Virginia, that goes without saying that our health insurance is based out of West Virginia. And if you've seen anything in the news for PEIA, that's the Public Employees Insurance Agency of West Virginia. Administration. Or administration, something. something like that. But budgeting has been cut infinitely, and they do not cover anything outside of the initial consultation. I paid 40 bucks for our first visit. But everything, including labs, I'm told, and medication from here on out, straight out of pocket, full cost for us. They won't even cover the prescriptions. They won't even cover any lab work related to it unless they pick up on my diagnosis issue and the doctor's office can fight to reason with them. But he's already told us the state of West Virginia does not require insurance companies to offer any fertili fertilization or fertility rather help. So yeah, it covered the also part of the the consultation was I guess it covered one lab work. For it me. covered the initial labs for both of us, and Ramias got some news he's still upset about. Still confused about. Um, got a sperm sperm analysis se sperm, sperm analysis sperm analysis everything checked out fine except for morphology which refers to the shape this might mean that th they're the heads on the sperm aren't quite completely oval it might have two tails or something's just slightly misshapen under normal circumstances, if I did not have the insulin resistance and I did not have PCOS, our chances of conception would be double what they are right now at least. I believe he said on average every menstrual cycle a woman has a 30% chance of conception. Yeah. And that's, he gave us this information straight from studies he himself has participated in over the last umpteen years he's been in practice 35 years he was he's he was quite quite successful well and he was like he kept repeating 35 years he has a great track record i've been told by our primary obg that he knows co-workers other nurses in the hospital where he's located that have gone to this specialist in morgantown and are my size and got pregnant so there is hope, but unfortunately, right now it's a money issue. Um, so we're hoping to document this journey along the way. We should be going. They're waiting for a couple more blood tests back from me um, to come back from me. Actually, I need to call them tomorrow because they said if I didn't call, if they didn't call me by today, that. I needed to call them. So they did blood tests to check my hormones and whatnot, and we're waiting to hear back on that before we go full on gung ho and can start tracking out cycles, figuring out my best days for treatment and things of that nature. But it's going to become very expensive very fast. Babies in and of themselves are very expensive, yes. It's more expensive just to even get a baby. But it it comes down to me. I understand that the science behind this medicine for fertility treatments is not cheap. But at the same time, I feel like by some power, I'm being punished for something that I could have been treated for a long time ago. I feel like 
it's a money racket to try and take advantage of people who cannot get pregnant. And I only, I mean that nothing against the doctors and the nurses who work in the practice, but behind the people who control the business end of it, those are the people I have issue with. And yeah, you, you should see about all the news with, with the yuppie pens and eighth medicine. So it all falls under that category of let's jack the prices up. And with recent changes in insurance here in the U.S., um, at current, only 15 states require insurance companies to offer plans that help with fertility. We live in Maryland, a state that requires it, but because our insurance comes from my place of work in West Virginia, we have zero help from here on out. We are looking at options to change insurance companies at the moment, and it's all a waiting game. But I can still, I still can't get out of my head the doctor looking my husband dead in the eye and say, do you know what this means for you? Changing diapers. I will never forget the look on Ramias's face when he was told that we actually have a chance to have a child, to make a family. After we got our false positive with the first visit to the original OB we were saying, seeing. I went to a local dollar store and got a baby blanket. All white except for a decal that has some silver and it says bless this baby. It stays in my pillow and I go to bed every night dreaming that we might have a child one day. It's been a very long hard four years but to finally have somebody who just doesn't cast me off as being another fat person to having somebody who genuinely looks at me with expertise and say whoa wait a minute there's something larger at play here to finally have answers is wonderful, but it still feels like there's this black cloud hanging over us. Now, I get to be vindictive, vindictive, but any doctors we see from out here on out that say anything in reference to her weight, I'm going to look them dead in the face and leave her alone on that. She has been proven it's an insulin resistance that is causing her weight gain take it out of your equation. He, Ramias can tell you, he has seen me battle the bulge for seven years. For the, all the time we've been together, I've done things to actively try and lose weight. From joining a gym, which I need to get back into doing, I got out of the habit of doing that, to trying to starve myself. Literally. When I was in college, I would pers purposefully try to shed weight by drinking detox teas and not eating for three days to the point where I was physically ill to try and shed just a couple pounds because it just felt like no matter what I did I couldn't lose it and to finally be told by somebody the reason why you can't is because your body won't let you was awesome. Yeah. Look on your face says incredulous essentially. I mean part of is her hormones telling her body she's in pregnancy mode. What does your body do whenever you're pregnant? Gains weight. Which I'm curious how long has my body been doing this been contributing to its own weight gain thinking I'm pregnant, preparing for pregnancy stuff. And I never even thought these things until we started looking up information about insulin resistance, not just in connection to PCOS, but into other things like my weight and my bipolar. And just my jaw hit the floor. Something that I literally wore on my skin 
told every doctor that looked at me what was wrong and not a single one of them until Dr. Horowitz picked up on it. It blows my mind. But from here on out, we're going to be documenting everything heavily. You'll get blog or vlogs, sorry, of us while we're traveling to and from and whatnot in the doctor's office. And as we have updates, you guys will have updates from here on out. So, do you want to tell them the two names we already picked out? Oh, um, if it's a boy, I mean, we've ha we have names picked out for... A future video. When we are actually pregnant. You guys are on a cliffhanger now, aren't you? Oh, okay. I didn't know he <laughs> He's like, what? I'm a writer. I create cliffhangers. It's fun. So as soon as things get rolling with us, you guys will know. We also are starting a fund to try and help with reprieving some of the financial burden this is going to put on us. I'll put a link down in the description below. And... We are going to try and keep up our pace with daily vlogs, which means somebody's going to have to start vlogging on his own. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to talk about. I talk for a living, so. So do I. Doesn't mean I like it. He's more outgoing and he's more of an extrovert than I am. And I'm the one that doesn't. I am technically what is an ambi ambi ambiovert. You're right in between. So well, I have the characteristics of both. I can go out into social areas for X amount of time, but then afterwards I have to be by myself to recharge. And I'm even worse. I'm an extreme introvert. I do not do well in social situations. The only reason why I think I'm getting comfortable in doing this is because, again, I have to talk nonstop as part of my job in front of 20 to 30 eyes, 20 to 30 pairs of eyes staring back at me. So it comes with practice. And I think you're going to get it. What? used to doing yeah so we had the idea watching a couple other videos to do some challenges so I'm gonna try and keep us scheduled to do weekly challenges and our first one is going to be coming up here very soon and keep an eye out for it guys much love bye, bye.